Audience, the needs and expectations you must meet. Whenever you need to create something, ask, who is my primary audience? And who is my secondary audience or audiences? The primary audience refers to the person or people who will first see and evaluate your work. The primary audience for an assignment in college, for example, is your professor. So you are creating something for your professor. That primary audience typically has specific expectations based on prior experience. So if your assignment is an academic paper, then your professor has specific ideas about what you will do in that paper. Does your paper follow style rules? Does it use good research? Is it on topic for this semester? Is it very, a very specific assignment? So while you're wondering what your professor wants, your professor has very clear ideas about what he or she expects. If you can generate exactly what your professor expects, or even more than he or she expects, yay! You've exceeded the requirements and made your instructor very happy which makes you very happy. The primary audience for an advertising agency is the executives and advertising department at the company that hired the agency. So this is the first primary audience that you at the agency must please. That primary audience also has specific expectations based on prior experience, their marketing campaign, their budget, and customer demographics. So, you need to know your audience's expectations, both explicit and implicit. Explicit expectations are those that are established as part of the assignment and field. So, people clearly lay out explicit expectations. They tell you what they are. For example, an explicit expectation at many colleges is an assignment. Write your research paper in a particular style. They'll either tell you MLA, APA, or Chicago. Now, implicit expectations are often those that require some research, and they might be based on the characteristics, needs, and experience of the primary audience. Implicit expectations require you to know a lot more about your audience. So, if you are presenting for an ad agency and you're wondering what to give them, you sh probably should know that if several years ago they had a very bad experience with a TV commercial. The secondary audience refers to any person or people who could see and evaluate your work. Therefore, if the primary audience for an assignment in college is your professor, then the secondary audience for that assignment is anyone your professor might show it to. Also, consider that the secondary audience for that assignment might be someone you want to show that assignment to later, so you'll create the assignment for the professor, but later that assignment will serve another duty. For example, You'll write that paper and submit it as a graduate school work sample. In the case of an advertising agency, your secondary audience, the public who will see the advertisements, becomes the primary audience when the company appro approves your ads. So there are implicit expectations about audience here as well. You need to ask yourself, how can I get this audience to buy this product? This primary audience of consumers might be a mystery to you. So once again, ask yourself, what do these people want and expect? When you do your audience analysis, you are asking the big questions. What does my audience or audiences expect? Who is my audience? How do I know what my audience wants? Begin with demographic information. Answer these questions. What's the age of this person or people? Are they male, female, a mixture? Create your Venn diagrams, even if they're just in your mind. Figure out the ages of the audience. So if you have multiple people that you're evaluating, determine what age group they're in, what their expectations might be based on this. You must also think about their knowledge about the subject. This is critical. So if you have a very knowledgeable audience, you are going to present your information differently than if you have a very, uh, an audience that has very little knowledge about the subject. In that case, you're going to need to educate your audience. Answer other questions and create more questions based on what you are presenting, based on your project itself and the, the situation. You want to know the education level of the person you're presenting to. What area of the country do they live in? What work experience do they have? What's their socioeconomic status? 
answer other questions about religion, ethnicity, and political affiliation, often these will play more an important a role than you might at first perceive. They will certainly affect the language choices that you use and how you present things. So once again, another critical area <laughs> as far as answering questions is technical expertise, particularly if you are teaching some, someone something technical. To answer these questions, begin by brainstorming. Come up with all the possible questions that could affect audience expectations and reactions. So don't just use the audience analysis questions generated here. Think about your specific assignment, what you are trying to do, and come up with questions. Begin by asking questions. When you can, directly ask your audience questions. Show samples of your evolving work when that makes sense. Conduct trials. Get others to read and view your work. Feedback is important. Ask yourself always, what are the characteristics of other possible readers? What words, phrases, or choices could create a negative impression? Let's consider the case briefly of Mitt Romney and his 47% comments that he made in 2012. Now, he originally was making these comments at the home of a private campaign contributor in Boca Raton. However, video was taken by a bartender, and these comments were widely disseminated, um, and the video was watched, and this hurt his presidential campaign. Now, Mitt Romney claims that his original comments were just intended for that specific audience. However, he should have taken into account the fact that his primary audience for the election, a secondary audience for these particular comments, would have big problems with the words and phrases that he used. Let's consider another case. In this case, the choice was inappropriate and insensitive. Call of Duty Ghost, the, the company that produces this video game, um, created a commercial that showed a group of young men and Megan Fox participating in a shootout in Las Vegas as Frank Sinatra's mu music played. Now, the heavy artillery and the um, shootout itself, shown in a very real-world venue, was seen as incredibly insensitive in light of the recent mass shootings. So, both words, phrases, and choices can play a huge role in how your work is perceived, and you need to consider not just your primary audience, but the reactions of any secondary audiences, and you need to carefully think about the primary audience, because video gamers themselves probably took this Call of Duty Ghost commercial in stride. However, there was a wider <laughs> and bigger audience than the creators of the video game thought about. All those who have been affected by real world violence um, and saw this as inappropriate and became angry. Now these people also purchase video games often as gifts, so consider that. Knowing all that, knowing your audience's characteristics, knowing how they might perceive things, having done research, go back to the requirements of the work itself. These are important. If you've been asked to create a 30 second commercial, don't create a two minute commercial. Carefully fulfill the requirements of the job, but always keep the characteristics of the audience or audiences in mind. Audience expectations and potential reactions should shape your creation process. You've just been watching Victoria McCready, Audience, the needs and expectations you must meet.